Hey guys, what's going on? Dave Wobble here, and welcome to FTD Facts, the channel where we teach you everything Yo. on everything. But you know what? The other day I was thinking to myself, I was just sitting there wondering, I'm like, does your brain ever run out of space? Like, do you ever run out of memory? Are our brains like supercomputers and they only have a X amount of memory before you have to delete stuff and then add new stuff? Now, if you ask me when I was thinking about this, I'm like, man, this would be a question that you guys would probably like to know. Because it is kind of a hard question to answer. We really don't know a lot about the brain. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, if you guys got a brain, hit that like button. Easy. Now some of you guys out there, you guys may have great memory where some people don't have good memory. Some people are sitting there going, man, I can remember a phone number from my friend's house or cell phone from years ago. The truth is when it comes to remembering thoughts, emotions, feelings, and memory, it all depends on what type of memory you are using. Basically, memory is created by creating new neural patterns and of course, neural connections. And no, memory is not stored within your brain cells. So if somebody has more brain cells than somebody else, it doesn't mean they have a better memory. It's all these weird webby sort of connecting sort of things that are going on inside your brain. According to Nelson Cohen, who's a cognitive physicist at the University of Missouri, he says that over a period of time, memory is placed in neural patterns. And these patterns are in the circuits of collected neurons. And therefore, the more connections, the better your memory. Yay, I got more connections, woo! It's like having Facebook friends. But here's the thing, theoretically, the brain is always, always, always making connections. Which means you can theoretically have an unlimited amount of memory. Now, what did I mean earlier when I said, well, it depends on the type of memory that you use? Well, first of all, there's a thing called short-term and long-term memory. Wow, there's no medium term? Dang. According to the University of McGill, short-term memory is stored in the prefrontal lobe. But long-term memory is transferred deeper in your brain to the hippocampus. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I want to say hippopotamus. <laughs> now, scientists have also taken CT scans of people, and they've discovered that certain areas of the brain light up with different emotions and different memories and different thoughts. But the hippocampus is generally known to solidify these patterns once the memory gets thrown in there. And that is what creates your long-term memory. Now, of course, let's jump back to connections of neurons. The thing is, for this to happen, you need a lot of protein and, of course, other chemicals. Studies have shown that even if you remove one chemical element from your diet, unfortunately, you will lose memory. Now, keep in mind they did that with animals. I'm not sure if they really did it with humans. Funny thing also about memory is that memory actually likes to switch over and breed with other memories. And that can, unfortunately, change your perception of your memory. Nelson Cohen uses the example of learning two similar languages to show how you you could forget. Basically, if you were to learn something like Spanish and Portuguese, because they're so similar, you may end up saying some Portuguese words in a Spanish sentence. Also, putting too much information in at once is not a good idea. The best thing you can do is really focus on learning one thing at a time. Think of your brain like a funnel. If you were to try to jam in so much and it was going down that small hole, it's not going to remember much. The reason you will forget is because your brain won't have the amount of time to categorize its memory. And surprisingly, scientists have discovered when it comes to short-term memory, unfortunately, human beings can't remember a lot. Scientists asked if they could look at a computer screen and see if they could remember a broad range of colors. And unfortunately, the people could only remember about three or four of them. Keep in mind though, forgetting is a natural thing as well. According to Joe Tsein, who is a neurologist at the Georgia Regents University, he says that our brains are not designed to hold an infinite amount of information. And his his studies show that if you learn something new, you can forget something from the past. But here's the thing, if you forget it, it doesn't mean it's completely erased from your brain. Because like I said, it's all about context and categorizing your thoughts. For example, you may say hello to Jill here and totally forget her name. But then you may remember going to that Aerosmith concert in which she came and then you think of Aerosmith and you go, oh right, her name is Jill. Overall, the brain is not only a fascinating thing, but it's also something that we are still trying to understand completely. And you know what, guys? I really hope that this answered some of your questions about the brain. As for me, my head is hurting over just thinking about it. And as for creating memory, it is completely infinite. You can do it anytime. As a matter of fact, you're doing it right now. But thanks for watching, guys. My name is Dave Wapple. This has been FTD Facts, the channel where we teach you guys everything about everything. And if you guys would like to learn something new and you have a recommendation for a video, just let us know down 
there in the comments below. Who knows? We may give you a shout out as well. So thanks fans. We will see you guys later in the next video. Cool. Bye.